Welcome to the heart of Patagonia, where nature paints the most breathtaking canvas. Rain or shine, this place is beautiful. I had ventured to the southern reaches of Chile to take you along what's called the route of the parks and show you some of the important conservation work that is not only protecting the wildlife here, establishing national parks, but protecting this wild and beautiful landscape so that people from all over the world can come and see it. From the elusive Weymul deer to the majestic Andean condor ruling the skies, we delve into the critical conservation initiatives safeguarding these emblematic species with rewilding Chile. Each step of our expedition unveils a new chapter in the ongoing story of preservation. This adventure begins in the stunning lakeside town of Puerto Varas. This is part of the lakes region here in Chile, well known for its plethora of outdoor adventures, nearby national parks, and the pretty epic backdrop of the Osorno volcano. I wish we had more time here, but it's just a mere stopover on our couple week journey that's gonna take us south through Chile and Patagonia to see some of the most spectacular national parks. But while we're here, we're gonna be meeting with one of the organizations that has been fundamental, not only in establishing seven of the national parks, but helping them be rewilded all throughout this part of Chile and Argentina too. Carolina, it is so nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Chile. Thank you. I am so excited to come and explore some of the national parks here. Could you just give me a little bit of an overview about what you guys are doing here in establishing national parks and protecting some of the land here and a little bit of the backstory as well? I spent a good hour with Carolina learning about some of the projects and the keystone species that rewilding Chile is helping to protect. Much of Patagonia since the arrival of Europeans has been covered in large ranches or estancias, as they're called down here. Thousands of miles of fencing and habitat degradation due to livestock moved wild animals like puma and guanaco and waymill deer to the brinks of these habitats, putting many species in danger of extinction. Through land purchases and help from the Chilean government, rewilding Chile has been on a decade-plus journey to bring this part of the world back to its natural habitat, and with it, repopulate once scattered and minimized populations of wild animals. And I am here to see just how far they've come. We work in a section of Chile that starts right here where you are in Puerto Varas and ends in the southern tip of Chile. And we have uh, promoted that area um, through a name that is the root of parks of Patagonia. It's a, it's a territorial vision, but with a deep conservation vision. This vision was launched by Douglas Tompkins. And um, today it comprises 17 national parks, but we are about to form in th during 2024, uh, park number 18, wow. the Cape Trower National Park. We have already made an agreement with the Chilean presidency to make this park, and we are working on it as, as we speak. Basically, we work in three areas. We help create national parks, and then through rewilding, which is our conservation approach, which is ecological restoration, but in a more dynamic way, we, we take care of not only of a species that is missing, but, um, but um, every species that needs to be there in the ecosystem and all the interactions between the species. And also we work with adjacent communities of the national parks, so they become involved with it, mm. and they become involved through environmental education and through developing activities, uh, economic activities that, that could link them even more to the park. But the idea is that they fall in love with their national patrimony, so they become the first line of defense. Just to be clear, this huge territory between Puerto Montt and Cape Horn, it has today uh, 17 national parks. Uh, of those 17, seven Tompkins Conservation help make. It concentrates 91% of the acreage under National Park wow. in Chile. So we're talking about this green land for the planet. I have traveled south from Puerto Varas and I'm in the car, as you can see, heading to the Villa Cerro Castillo. This is a small village that's just outside one of the national parks here called Cerro Castillo National Park, which I'll be visiting 
tomorrow and the next day. Now from Puerto Varas, it's a long journey by car. So I've actually flown down into Balmaceda. I've rented a car and it's just about an hour drive into the village, which is outside the national park. Tomorrow, I'm actually gonna be meeting with one of the guides from Rewilding Chile, and he'll be taking us to track some of the animals. So I'm really excited to see some of the wildlife in this park, see some of the conservation success stories that they're going to show us as well. And there's also a lot more to do in this national park, hiking and some big mountains to climb as well. So hopefully we can do a little bit of everything there and I'm really excited to work. Castillo National Park. I was not ready to get on camera. My hair is a mess and we're still on our way. It's also raining, but this was too beautiful to pass up. We just entered the National Park a few minutes ago and all of this lupine is just blowing my mind. It is absolutely spectacular. And I cannot wait to see what else this National Park has in store. Just this alone would make me come back time and time again. But I know there's a ton of wildlife here, which we're going to go see after this rain ends, I think. dropped my bags at my little cabin that I'm staying at in Cerro Castillo, the village there. It is a very, very small town. Uh, lots of homes, well not lots, but some homes, one gas station. I did see a couple places to eat, which is good. And um, it's really rural and <laughs> probably one of the smallest communities I've ever stayed at nearby a national park. But right now I'm just kind of doing a little drive around, getting a lay of the land here. It is just this really wild landscape. You have mountains on one side that look like the Swiss Alps, and then on the other side you have this rocky and green area that looks a little bit like Bears Ears National Monument in Utah, and they just kind of intersect with this river in the middle. And I'm driving through this windy road right now to see if I can get a better aerial view of this landscape to be able to show you. But pretty spectacular and definitely very different landscape than I'm used to seeing. But really, really big mountains over here on my right hand side. Uh, just really beautiful and it is absolutely gusting out there. Very, very windy as well so I'm gonna try to get out of the car and do some shooting but we'll see uh, we'll see what happens with the wind here. Right now I am with Christian from Rewilding Chile. We are just hiking up some deer trails here in the park in search of the waymel deer. This is a rather elusive species because they believe there are just around 1,500 of these left in the country of Chile with about 10% of them living here in this park. Well, Cerro Castillo National Park uh, is a very special place. It has the, the characteristic that an important section of the park is cut by the Carretera Austral. So it's a place where for first time, many people had the chance to spot, to sight a Wemul, and it represents a, a unique opportunity for many people for first time to be in touch, to, to see this endangered deer and to be connected with nature, with uh, the national park, and understanding the value of the natural places. Also promoting a good behavior of people, so people should behave properly respecting the space of the wildlife uh, who has the priority here. We are just visitors and we should enjoy on, on the landscape, on, in the nature. All right, we've just spotted a Waymel deer just straight ahead of me. 
about 300 feet. We're gonna see if we can get a little bit closer. I spent most of the afternoon with Christian, learning about the Weymul and getting to spot several as well. The Weymul is considered the southernmost deer in the world. It is on the coat of arms for Chile and once roamed all throughout Patagonia. Overhunting, livestock fencing, and habitat encroachment have caused their numbers to decline greatly and forced them to change their native migration patterns. The total estimation for the population is about 1,500 individuals in total, not so many. not many. And they are just uh, distributed in the south of Chile and Argentina. The issue that the spe species face is that the population is distributed in small and fragmented groups. So the connectivity in the long term is an issue. Right now the challenge is how to develop a number of uh, private and, and, and state activities to reduce the threats over the species, to increase the, the connectivity of the species, and of course the species face different challenges along the distribution. In some areas, uh, we have issues with disease on, on Wemul. Uh, in others, is the fact that they can't access to wintering areas. In others, they are really at the very top of the mountains uh, without access for wintering areas and good quality of, of food in winter. So it's a, a real challenge uh, to recover these species and it's super important for the, the ecosystem in, in Patagonia. Uh, of course, the species is a um, keystone as a larger beaver and interact with other species like pumas, foxes, condors. We share these species with Argentina along the Andes. So, yeah. of course, it requires um, cooperation between countries as well, not, not just a single country, yeah. but also a, a, a large scale perspective for the future of these species and the ecosystems where the species is present. Well, I'll call that a pretty successful day deer tracking. I think by the end of the day, we'd counted about five or six and with such a small population of them in this park, it's pretty incredible that we were able to see that many. I think a lot of people come through this park and never see a way mule deer. So really cool to be able to see that many and that male at the end with the antlers was really awesome too. And it's, it's really just remarkable that we can see these animals because there are so many miles of fencing still in and around this park, you know. The unique thing about Cerro Castillo is that unlike a lot of national parks that have a really big swath of connected land, this park has just these little sections here and there because it's that's the amount of land that they've been able to buy so far and protect. But it's not necessarily connected and there's a lot of farmland that's still on the outskirts and within this area that they'd like to have protected, which means there's a lot of fencing. And that can really segregate the deer from being able to migrate or move freely in the area. So being able to see this many, that was really, really cool thing. And I've got one more stop today because Christian actually told me about this cool prehistoric site that is up the road from here. There are supposed to be some handprints. I'm not sure if they're painted or if they're pressed into the rock, uh, but they're really old and it's something that we definitely have to go check out. So that's where we're heading now. All right, we are on the trail up to the archaeological site. So this is just at the end of a dirt road and costs 2,500 Chilean pesos, which I believe is about 275 in US dollars with today's exchange route, route, exchange rate. <laughs> One day I'll find the word for rate. And the gentleman at the front said that it's about a 15 minute walk there's a great viewpoint just a few minutes up the trail where we can see some of the mountains and uh, and then we'll get down to the archaeological site. Wow, that is definitely a nice view. This is also such a great depiction of the Aysen region because you have 
the glaciers up here on the top. You have the rivers and the mountains and the Patagonian steppe all around. And down below, we've got horses and cows from some of the farms that are left here. So this just screams Patagonia and this region as well. It's just such a great depiction of what you can expect if you come to this middle section of Patagonia here in the ISM region. Well, welcome to the Wall of Hands. Now, this is an old site. These handprints that you can see behind me are, they think around 3,000 years old or newer. There was actually a tradition here that goes back about 10,000 years where people would paint their hands on walls in what's now Patagonia and Argentina and Chile. Now, these are actually negative handprints. So people would put their hands on the wall and then they would blow paint over the backs of their hands leaving what's called a negative handprint. I'm gonna get up close here so you guys can take a look. If I had to guess, this is where they brought all the school children a couple thousand years ago to trace their hands. Now there are some also positive handprints on here where it's just the hand in paint, but this is pretty much what they do in our kindergarten classes too, so not a big surprise. That was a really neat stop. I always love finding old historic sites like this in the places that I visit, but now I've got something really important to do and that's eat some dinner. What a beautiful day we have today here in Cerro Castillo National Park. It's my last day and yesterday was wonderful getting to see those way mule deer. And one of the most special parts for me was actually getting to see the looks on the locals' faces that would pull over and get to see these deer now. Deer aren't that special to us in America because they're everywhere, but down here they are very, very special and very unique and getting to see people just with the awe and wonder in their face when they got to see a waymo was really cool. Today we're not deer tracking, we're actually hiking. Now this park is actually really unique because most of it's actually not open to the public. There are just a few trails that they open in the summer season here, which is our winter, for people to be able to explore. There's a four-day backpacking trail, and then there's also a couple other trails that go up to Cerro Castillo Peak and some of the neighboring alpine lakes. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today, going up to Lago Cerro Castillo, which is said to be really beautiful, and I'm really excited to see it. All right, so I just started the trail here, and Definitely, right when you start this, you see some of the issues the Park Service has with allowing public access to the land here because you actually start on private property and even if you had an entrance to get to the park, you still have to pay the landowner to be able to come and use this trail. So it's just one of the challenges that the Park Service is having to deal with in making these agreements with the private landowners that have the access ways to be able to get into the middle area of the park that the park owns. So it's definitely a challenge and definitely a challenge not only for rewilding this area but giving people public access. We need public access because this is what allows these parks to generate income and protect the places more and it also gives people an opportunity to fall in love with the land so that they want to protect it. It has gotten really, really pretty in here. Just really tall, beautiful green trees. Well, it is nearly impossible to get just the scope of what this landscape looks like up here. It is just so vast and just incredible. On one side of the river, you can see the Patagonian steppe. Far down in the distance, you can see where the two rivers actually unite, where the brown water meets this turquoise blue. And then you have the mountains in the forest on this side. 
<laughs> just, just beautiful. Oh, and then on the other side, on the tops of the mountains, you can see glaciers. So it is just beyond anything that I can show you on this camera. Just does not do it justice for the spectacular scenery. We are almost at the lake and this trail is certainly steep, but I think it's gonna have a pretty big reward. I mean, honestly, it already has with just these views. Well, this is certainly a place that will absolutely take your breath away. I don't care how many hikes you've done in places around the world. The water here is just this unbelievable color of blue. I've, I've never seen anything this vibrant, this rich in turquoise in nature until now. This is definitely a hike that's gonna go in my my record books of best hikes for sure. All right, friends, I am back at the car where we started this hike. And now it's time to hop back in the car, get back on the road down the Carretera Astral and head south to the waterfront town of Puerto Tranquilo. This road that I'm driving is called the Carretera Astral. So this road is just this really long dirt road. It's a scenic byway, but it also connects all these small towns and these national parks. And there's a lot of people actually bike packing it, which seems incredibly miserable. Uh, this road's actually quite narrow. So when there are cars passing each other, if you were a biker, you would just be completely caked with dirt. Um, yes, the views are spectacular, but it's also lots of ups and downs, lots of turns, and definitely really challenging. So I definitely give these people some kudos that are doing, you know, hundreds of miles of this road because it does not look like much fun, if you ask me. in Puerto Tranquilo. It's been a very long day and I'm very excited to get something to eat. But tomorrow we have something really cool planned and I'm really excited to take you. Welcome to what's called the Marble Chapel or Marble Cathedral. This rock formation behind me is absolutely beautiful, but it's going to get better because this actually creates some caves and we're about to paddle right through them. Marble is slightly soluble in water, so over just a few thousand years, this corridor of marble eroded. Combine that with the crystal clear blue glacial waters of this lake, and it's formed a place of bewildering beauty with countless caves, mazes, columns, and tunnels in the marble. Wow. I've paddled through sea caves in many parts of coastal California and other parts of the world, but never anything quite like this and never anything made of marble. The water here is about 15 meters deep, so give or take around 50 feet. And the reflection from the sun and the sky off this water and into these marble caverns is just absolutely incredible. Is anyone keeping track of how many times I've said wow in this video? Because wow, <laughs> this landscape just never seems 
to be terrible. It is absolutely spectacular. Everywhere you look, especially this time of year, I mean, these lakes and the turquoise color that they are, just, just really captivating. That kayak trip was really great. Just a couple of hours out there on the lake, but the marble chapels, such a unique and really neat natural sculpture. And I can't believe they're made out of marble. Just one of the most unique and cool things that I've ever gotten to see in a lake for sure. And uh, just a really great couple of days that we've had here in Cerro Castillo, here in Percha Tranquilo. The Patagonian adventures are continuing, but I'm gonna end this video here. So if you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment down below and stay tuned because I've got more to come from this beautiful region of Chilean Patagonia soon.